Welcome to Connect. We are incredibly proud to introduce Quest 3, the first mainstream mixed reality headset. It automatically maps the space that you're in using two dedicated color camera sensors and a depth sensor. And next year, uh, we're launching something that we call Augments, spatially anchored digital objects that you can interact with. So we have been creating a bunch of AIs ourselves. Well, now you can just drop the, the dungeon master into one of your chats. And uh, let's check this guy out. Let's get medieval, player. The last thing that I want to show you today, which is the next generation of Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. OK, now that was pretty exciting, at least in terms of the smart glasses front, because I'm someone that actually does already have Ray-Ban stories. Unfortunately, I bought them like a few months ago. They were like half off, so it makes sense, but I don't know, they're not in the case right now, but it's gonna be a smaller case and everything. And so I'm really excited to explore that and see kind of where those are going. Consider getting the new ones. Those are the things that I'm most excited about. I am curious to see as far as the Quest 3 stuff. They mentioned all these new games with features that use the depth sensor. And so I'm curious to see if some of those games and features will work on the Pro, or at least like how well they work on the Quest 3 versus the Quest Pro. Because obviously, you know, if you're like me and you bought the MetaQuest Pro when it first came out, you paid $1,500 for it. And that was like a year ago. So <laughs> I'm hoping that, you know, some of these really cool things I can still use myself. In particular, I'm really interested in seeing the artifacts that they talked about, where you can place different things directly in your space, whether it's a portal from a game, they showed album art that you can just kind of paste on your walls as, as art that augments your space. I'm really curious to try those out because people build their own apps for that sort of thing right now, but now it's going to be like a native part of the headset, which is very exciting and something that I think is new and different that we haven't seen yet from kind of like a default headset app. Those are the main things that I'm really excited for. I mean, the AI stuff, definitely interesting to see where that's going. I'm definitely glad that they're talking about the kind of transparency and responsible building. Some people may have their own opinions about whether or not that's just corporate speak for let's not get sued or whatever. <laughs> There's always gonna be people, people who say stuff like that. But I mean, I'm glad that they're publicly saying that they know that AI can steer people wrong and do bad things and that they're definitely working on that. And so that slow rollout does sound very smart to be able to kind of fix those problems before they get into the major, major mainstream, the drinking game that Boz is talking about. I can't believe he actually mentioned that. There are some exciting things that we're gonna see, I think, coming to the Quest platform. It's also interesting to see some of these things that some people might interpret as a direct response to some of the things that the Apple Vision Pro does. One of the things that people didn't like about the Apple Vision Pro release was the fact that your eyes can kind of appear like through the headset on the front glass. Some people think it's really creepy. And I guess since I haven't had the privilege to try it out yet, I can't say for myself. Uh, I think it's interesting and unique from a UX perspective in terms of making people get the sense of you being present. <laughs> it's just, that's just what I thought of when I saw the girl just like practicing piano at the cafe or whatever, and she just rips the headset off. I'm pretty sure my hairline has at least receded a little bit from ripping VR headsets off my head. It would have been nice if the Vive Cosmos was actually a good headset because it did have the flip up feature. You might have heard my cat meowing. He's chilling over there. This is Cadence. He's the one that made the little meow. This is Kyle. He doesn't really like being cooped up, so. I'm pretty sure he uses that chair more than I do, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, the AI stuff that they talked about in terms of all the different AI chat bots that they're gonna have, I certainly think it's an interesting approach compared to something like ChatGPT, which doesn't really have like a name or a face or a persona. It's just this kind of like vague AI helper. Because even something like Siri, Bigsby, you know, all these other assistants like Alexa as well, they have this sort of personality to them already because they actually have a voice, which I mean, you can customize the voice, 
but that Siri voice is so iconic, for example, and like it has a personality that people understand as being like that, that's Siri. So I think it's interesting that they're working on that with the different chatbots. In some way, I'm kind of like, why did they have to get celebrities to become the personalities of these chatbots? Because they're so famous that you know that you're not talking like you're, you're supposed to be talking to the character. So like that dungeon master character rather than Snoop Dogg per se, but I mean, I don't know. That's not super important, but that's just something that I was thinking about. It's, we know it's Paris Hilton, it's too obvious. I think that's probably part of the draw that they're um, using with that just to get people interested in wanting to try them out because it's like, oh, this is cool. I can play Dungeons and Dragons with Snoop Dogg as my dungeon master, or, you know, I can go on a, a detective adventure with Paris Hilton as Amber or something. So, you know, obviously people who are actors, <laughs> they already play different personas, but it just feels different because they really still seem like themselves rather than like a different character. So I don't know. I would say that of all the things that were released, for sure, for me, it was the Ray-Ban stories news that was the most exciting because that's something that feels just very different from what we had before. I mean, I guess this is coming from the perspective of someone who owns a MetaQuest Pro, so I already know what it feels like to have some sense of that mixed reality device. Obviously the Quest 3 isn't going to have the same sensors as the Quest Pro, like it doesn't have the eye tracking and face tracking. Who knows if they're going to add some modules for that if people want to kind of add it onto their headset. Who knows? Let's say they release the Pro 2 next year, for example. Is that finally gonna have the uh, depth sensor? Those sort of things. <laughs> I would say those are some of my initial thoughts coming off of the Meta Connect event for 2023. I'm interested to hear some of the things that you think about what happened in the event, what you're most interested and excited for. Presumably those of you who don't have a Quest Pro are probably very interested in the Quest 3, or maybe some of you that even do have a Quest Pro, maybe you'd prefer the Quest 3, I don't know. I'd love to hear what you have to say about that in the comments, and I'll definitely be following up with some more videos. But yeah, that's all I have for now, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!